Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's Sunday, April 25th, and we're breaking down the 12-game main site that we have over on DraftKings today. And if you find this video helpful in any way possible, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, and I really do appreciate it. If you want to follow me over on social media, the handle's in the bottom corner of your screen. And if you want to with the channel over on Patreon, join a community of several hundred members. You can get access to the projections, optimizer, ownership projections, rankings, cheat sheets, data sheets, Discord community, all that fun stuff. Link is down below, but I think that's it for the shameless plug. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as per usual, we will start with the pitchers. And there's a couple of other options that I do think are viable today, but these are the three I'm kind of locking in on as of right now. But Brandon Woodruff up top, he's the ace of the slate, $9,400 and a good matchup here versus the Chicago Cubs. And although the Cubs have been hitting recently, they're still a team that will strike out quite a bit versus righties. And in two previous starts so far this season, with Woodruff going against the Cubs, he has won both of those matchups. I'm not sure if he had the win actually in the win column, but I mean like he won where he had pretty solid games. I think he had around 30 and 20 some fantasy points, healthy amount of strikeouts as well. And looks like the wind's going to be blowing in quite a bit for Wrigley today. I'm seeing like 11 mile per hour winds blowing in, maybe not directly in, but kind of diagonally in. So it's going to be a boost for pitching here. So I can definitely get behind using some Woodruff. His numbers the past two seasons have been pretty darn good. Uh, 2.79 ERA, 3.21 XFIP, right on par with the Sierra, 31% K rate, not really walking too many guys, doesn't have a lot of power whatsoever. And so far, the Cubs this season versus right-handed pitching, while they do have some, you know, they have some dangerous bats in the lineup, so I don't think it's an absolute cakewalk spot here, but they're striking out at a 27.1% clip, which is down a couple days ago. I was sitting at around 20, 29%, so I mean, small sample size, so these numbers are going to shift quite a bit <laughs> compared to when we get later into the season, but this is still a team that will strike out quite a bit, and I think Brandon Woodruff has the upside to have like a 20-30 fantasy point game today, so I do think he is worth that price point. But if you don't want to go all the way up to Woodruff and you want to save some money for some expensive bats, Erod here and Danny Duffy are in really good price ranges and really good matchups, so I don't think you have to play Woodruff today, but I'm loving these price points on Rodriguez and Danny Duffy if you do want to save some money. So Rodriguez here, he could either be an SP2 or an SP1 today, but he gets a good spot here versus the Seattle Mariners, who... Have been playing well recently, but Erod's off to a good start this season. He's kind of been hovering around 18 to 20 fantasy points in his first three starts. Obviously, didn't play last season, but in 16 innings so far, hasn't been too bad. The velocity is at 93 miles per hour, averaging about 81 pitches per game so far. We can only expect that to kind of go up as the season progresses. 2.86 XFIP, 2.95 Sierra. Strikeout rate just below 30%, which I like to see. Not really walking guys at all, which is also really good to see. Not giving up much power, not a lot of hard contact, so... I can get behind some Erod here in the matchup versus Seattle. It's a it's a good strikeout spot here. So far this season, they're striking at a 28.3% clip, which I know shows up right here, so you'd think red is bad, but we're talking about three teams here, and both these teams strike out quite a bit versus lefties. Like Detroit's at 32%, Seattle, like I just mentioned, is at 28 and then Chicago's at 29 These are very high strikeout numbers, even though that does show up red. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's a really good strikeout number for here for Erod. Only a 158 ISO. Batting average is high, but batting average is pretty high across the league right now because it's small sample sizes. 294 Woban and 94 WRC+. Plus. They are walking quite a bit, but I still think Erod is going to be the winner of this matchup here. And only 3.74 implied team total against them. Pretty heavy favorite. I, the one thing I will mention is that there is going to be weather for this game, and it looks like it's going to be a late start in play. Because during game time, it's supposed to be raining quite a bit. But it looks like a few hours after lock, or not lock, I guess when the game starts, if they're willing to wait this out, it should be good to go after that. So keep that in mind when you are rostering Boston Bats or uh, Eduardo Rodriguez today because it looks like weather could be an issue. But if they are patient and wait this out, it looks like they could be good to go. And I really hope they are patient because I like a lot of these guys on Boston today. Then Danny Duffy, $8,000. He might be my favorite pitcher to use on this slate. I think he's kind of an SP2 lock, to be honest. Now, I don't think you absolutely have to lock him because you can make some Woodruff and Rodriguez lineups, but if you're playing cash games, I'm really liking getting the Danny Duffy at some point. I mean, either as your, I don't think you'd be your SP1. I think Woodruff or Edward Rodriguez would be your SP1, but Danny Duffy is in an excellent spot here versus Detroit. They just got destroyed by Brady Singer last night, I think, or not last night, but yesterday, I should say. But I think he had, like, what? I think Singer had, he either had like 26 or 32 fantasy points. I can't remember exactly, but he had an excellent day. And Danny Duffy's been good so far this season, kind of hovering on that 20 to 25 point range. The velocity's been up this year. He's getting a lot of strikeouts since last season. He's sitting at a 24% K rate. But like I just mentioned, we were talking about Rodriguez with the Seattle team versus lefties. This is this Detroit squad striking out a ton versus left-handed pitching so far this season, and their numbers are absolutely abysmal. 
32.7% K rate, only a 6% walk rate, 0.9 ISO, 245 average, 233 well, but a 47 WRC plus, which absolutely sucks. So Denny Duffy, I would say he's my favorite pitcher on the slate as of right now, and $8,000 is not a bad price point, and he's going to grade out very well in my projections. So I'm thinking of Denny Duffy here. Only a slight favorite, but she was a little bit higher, like the win equity, but I do think the Royals can pick up the win here and a 6K prop over in Vegas. So you can definitely sign me up for some Danny Duffy. And I think all three of these pitchers are fairly priced. Brandon Woodruff should be close to that 10K range, so I think 9,400 is fine. But Rodriguez and Duffy, they might be a little bit too cheap, to be honest, especially for their matchups and the way they've been pitching so far this season. But with that being said, I think we can move on to the bats. And as per usual, We'll hit the catchers, go around the infield, and then we'll hit the outfield as well. We'll start up top with Christian Vasquez, 5100 bucks, Very expensive, but the Boston Red Sox did a lefty on the mound today, and a lot of these guys hit lefties very, very well in their lineup. The numbers for Vasquez so far this season haven't been great. He's only batting 258, 309 Woba, 136 ISO. Not really striking out a lot, but in the past, he's been a pretty good hitting catcher. And if you are stacking up the Red Sox and you have a lot of money to spend for the catcher position, like, if you go the E-Rod and Danny Duffy route today, that's only around $16,000, $16,200 at pitching. So you'll be able to do pretty much whatever you want with your bats as long as you get a couple value guys in there, which I'm assuming you would do. So pricing shouldn't be too much of an issue. But as long as they get this game in, they're patient and wait. The Red Sox are one of the top stacks in the entire site versus Marge Vicious here. They have a team total of 5.26, which is right below the Oakland A's for the highest on the entire site, I believe pretty sure the Oakland days are the highest on the entire slate. But anyway, Christian Vasquez here going up against the lefty. If we could look at uh, Marjavish's numbers here since last season, I don't think he's an awful pitcher, but again, the Red Sox bats have been pretty good so far this season. A lot of these guys hit lefties very well, but 4.75 ERA, right on par with his x kind of right on par with the Sierra, so I kind of like when those match up a little bit. 21% K rate, 8% walk rate, I mean, ISO close to 200. I mean, he's not a terrible pitcher, but 38% hard contact rate is pretty good for the Red Sox here. But he's a guy you can pick on with good bats, and the Red Sox do have a lot of good bats here, so not overly concerned. And obviously, he's going to be a bit worse versus righties compared to lefties. Sean Murphy, 4100 bucks if you are stacking up the A's, which is something I would probably do today. Even though John Means is a good pitcher, I use not, maybe not a good pitcher, but he's a pretty average to sometimes in good matchups you can use him, which I did last time out versus the Rangers, and I think he went the full nine innings. Although I want to say he didn't pick up the win because I think it went to extra innings there. But he had a good game. He's got a good changeup. But I'm going to give the advantage here to the Oakland Bats. It's a big park upgrade for them going from Oakland to Baltimore and Camden Yards. Very hitter-friendly park. Also get those guaranteed ninth inning at bats as well. And they played well last night. Although I'd say John Means is the better pitcher than whatever they had on the mountain last night. I forget. But I think it was Wade LeBlanc. And I think they sent him down. So either way, though, like the A's here, they have quite a few guys that can hit left-handed pitching very well. And Sean Murphy is one of those guys, even though he's not the best bat, but if you are stacking up a team and you want to correlate up, correlate it up with the catcher position, Sean Murphy makes sense. And James McCann, 3600 bucks, going against Patrick Corbin, who kind of righted the ship last time out, but I still think he's a pitcher that we can pick on a little bit. No, I mean, I don't think he's trash. He's definitely not as bad as he was that one game when he was like the highest on pitch on the slate and he scored negative 20 fantasy points. But since last season, Corbin's numbers aren't like Corbin-esque of what we'd expect. 5.65 ERA, 4.41 X, uh, XFIP, 4.56 Sierra, 20% K rate, 7% walk rate, allowing a 307 batting average, and a 181 ISO and a 348 Woba. So there's definitely some upside here for some Mets bats, although I'm not really like loving the stack today, but if they can get to Corbin early and get to the bullpen, which hasn't been so very good so far this season, kind of getting beat up, I think the Mets could be a probably a sneaky stack today. I don't think they will be very popular. And Pete Alonso, 5100 bucks, kind of just exactly what I said for James McCann, so I'm not going to go over that again, but obviously Pete Alonso is a better bat than McCann. Uh, but one thing I want to mention with McCann, I always like him versus lefties, and with Corbin being a lefty, I think it's a pretty good spot for him. But Pete Alonso, plenty of power versus both lefties and righties, so if you are stacking with the Mets, kind of hard to leave off the big meat Pete. And then Matt Olson, 4700 bucks, Lefty on lefty matchup here, so not something I'm like super excited about, but it's kind of... It's kind of where you're hoping they get to John Means early and they bring in the bullpen that'll see some righty arms. But either way, Matt Olson has been fantastic so far this year. They're batting cleanup, not overly expensive, and pretty much the best stack on the entire slate, in my opinion. And so far versus lefties this year, though, he hasn't been that bad. And over the course of his career, Matt Olson hasn't been bad versus lefties. So I'm not really too concerned about the lefty on lefty matchup here. But so far this season, 21 played appearance sample size, so it is pretty small, but a 421 Woba. 353 ISO, 182 WRC plus, OPS above 1,000, only a 14% K rate. So I would not be too scared of this lefty on lefty matchup. People hate playing lefty on lefty matchups, but 
I'm not one that really gets too scared of it because if you like the stack, you're probably thinking John Means gets knocked out of the game early on, and then I'll see some righties in the bullpen anyway. And this is a beatable bullpen. Then Alex Kirillov, like that's how you say his name, but he's still free. He's in a prime spot in the order. The one thing I will say, it looks like this Minnesota Pittsburgh game does have some postponement risk. Postponement risk. So be careful when rostering any Pittsburgh or Minnesota guys. But if the game does happen to play, I wanted to have him on here because he's the bare minimum. I know he hasn't done anything so far this year, 10 plate appearances, and he has not got a hit yet. And he's got a nice negative 100 WRC plus. But if this game is good to go, he is free. And if you need the salary savings, he's always on the outfield as well. Going up against a ready and will pro. Dropping out of second base, we have Jed Lowry, 4500 bucks. He homered last night, and he's been having a good start to the season so far. ISO above 200, 296 batting average, 378 WOBA, and he's a switch hitter, so he'll always have the platoon advantage no matter who he's going against. His numbers versus lefties so far this year have been really good, actually. A 400 batting average, 420 WOBA, not a super high ISO, but against small sample sizes, 444 on base percentage, OPS close to 1,000, doesn't really strike out too much, and only a 15% ground ball rate, so he's lifting the ball and I'm liking Jed Lowry if you are stacking up the A's. And second base is not a good position today. So I think you either go Lowry or you just kind of find a pun option here in either Colton Wong or Matt Carpenter. Like I mentioned earlier, looks like the wind's going to be blowing in for this Brewers and Cubs game. So it's going to be a downgrade to the bats here. But I'm not looking for a homer out of Colton Wong. I'm just looking for a couple of singles, maybe a walk and a run. And I'll be just fine with that at 3200 bucks. Going against the ready Jake Arrieta, who's always struggled versus lefties the past few seasons. This doesn't really have any swing in this stuff for the most part. I don't think the Brewers are going to have a great game. Their offense kind of sucks, especially without Christian Yelich. There's a lot of bad bats in this lineup. Maybe even Jake Arrieta could be a halfway decent play today, although I'd have a hard time ever recommending Jake Arrieta. But if you're just looking for a guy that doesn't really strike out much, usually puts the ball in play and he's got some speed, Colton Wong is your guy. Matt Carpenter, kind of the opposite there, doesn't usually make much contact, but when he does, there's at least a little bit of pop there. But he's batting 0 7 or not 0, it sounds kind of weird. He's batting 0 7 7 so far this year, which is absolutely horrendous. 175 Woba. ISO is the same as his batting average. Man, he's just got some really bad numbers. A 12 WRC plus and a 154 slugging. But Luis Castillo, the games I've watched this year, every time there's a lefty on the mound, I get super nervous because I feel like they get a hit every single, not a lefty on the mound, a lefty in the batter's box. I feel like they get a hit almost every single time. So I guess it's a halfway decent spot here for Matt Carpenter, but ugh, this feels kind of gross playing. I'd really get the Colton Wong. He feels much safer. Dropping out third base, Raphael Devers, 5500 bucks. Kind of like I mentioned earlier with Matt Olson, don't be scared of the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup because if you like the stack, you're assuming the pitcher probably gets knocked out of the game early on, and then they'll see some righties in the bullpen. So if you are stacking up the Red Sox, Devers should be decently low-owned just because of the price point. And when people see a lefty on the mound, we'll probably skip right over Devers, but I think that's a mistake in tournaments. Alex Bregman, $5,000. The Astros went nuts yesterday. Absolutely nuts. I did have, uh, in my three max, I did have one Astro stack that was like dead last before the game started. And then at the end, it got third place. So I really do appreciate the Astros effort last night. Now, you could look at this two ways. They're hot or they used up all the runs last night. So whatever side you're on there, I'm kind of right in the middle where I think it's a decent spot here versus Dylan Bundy. Did struggle in that one start versus the Texas Rangers. And while I don't think he's a bad pitcher, the Astros are looking pretty good right now. So I do have some interest in them as a stack. And Dylan Bundy's a guy in the past, before he kind of got good again, where he would really struggle versus lefties and I guess righties too. A lot, a lot of hard contact. He's kind of fixed those errors in the previous seasons here. But I mean, these Astros bats are looking pretty good right now. So I can definitely get behind a stack in tournaments. Alex Bregman, prefer him versus lefties, but he's fine versus righties. Homered off of one last night. I think he went like three for three versus a righty, Griffin Canning. Matt Chapman, 4600 bucks. He's got a lefty on the mound, so anytime Chapman sees a lefty, he is certainly going to be in play for me. He's got better splits versus them, and I like the entire Oakland A's stack today, so I think that kind of speaks for itself. Xander Bogarts, 5800 bucks. He has been hitting excellent so far this season. He gets a lefty on the mound, but he's got a 372 batting average so far this year, a Woba above 400, ISO above 200, 174 WRC+. Plus. If we look specifically to lefties, Smaller sample size, but the numbers get even better. Batting average just shy of 400. Woba approaching 470. ISO approaching 300. WRC plus above 200. So yeah, if you got the money for Bogarts, or if you're just stacking at the Red Sox, I like I like Max Man here. Francisco Lindor, 4,800 bucks. If Carlos Correa happens to play, I would like him. But when I had my batting order projections come in, he gave me a <laughs> he gave me a no go. So if he sits today, I obviously we can't play him. It would hurt the Astros stack a little bit. He's been hitting well in the leadoff spot for the Astros. But Frankie Lindor here, if you are stacking up the Mets, I prefer him versus right-handed pitching, but he's viable in Mets stacks here. 
but he has not been very good so far this season. I will say that. Elvis Andrews, 3600 bucks. He's just a cheap part of that Oakland stack. Righty on lefty matchup here. He does hit lefties better. He's also been hitting kind of okay recently, so I think he is viable if you want a cheap option on a good team. Dropping down to the outfield, we have J.D. Martinez, 5700 bucks. Anytime he faces a lefty, he is going to be one of the top plays on the board, no matter the price point. And he's been playing absolutely exceptional so far this season versus both righties and lefties. But so far this season, specifically two lefties, pretty darn good, 269 batting average, 372 Woba, 346 ISO, and a 7% K rate with a 0% walk rate. But his numbers versus has actually been better versus righties so far this year. But again, smaller sample size, and he's still one of the you know best boppers in the entire league. So definitely one of the top home run spots here on the slate. And I do like the Red Sox quite a bit. Michael Brantley, 5,100 bucks. He has been amazing so far this year. And I always say, I, anytime I can recommend Michael Brantley, I will do it. His price tag is getting to the point where people don't really want to play him because he's not a big power guy. But if he's just going to keep getting doubles every time he's up, he is going to be worth it. He's batting 338 so far this season with a 179 WRC plus, 600 slugging, near 400 on base percentage, and a Woba close to 500 with a 262 ISO. So I can definitely get behind some Michael Brantley here. He's been fantastic so far this year. I'm not that's I'm not really that scared of the price point. And then his teammate Yard on Alvarez, 4,800 bucks. He's got more power in his bat, I would say, and he's been hitting well so far this season. Got a lot of RBIs last night and batting cleanup for a stack that I think is certainly viable today. So I like Yard on Alvarez. Roman Lariano, 4,700 bucks. He's got a lot of speed, so there's always some stolen base upside for him. But again, I'm just stacking up the ace here. He's kind of expensive for me, but I still think he's a viable option for a full-on Oakland A stack, but I don't think I'd get there in cash games because of the price point. would much rather play Mark Hanna. Kike Hernandez, 4200 bucks, leading off versus a lefty. Anytime Kike leads off versus a lefty, he was always in play for me on the Dodgers, now on the Red Sox. I mean, they've been a pretty solid hitting team so far, and I do like the stack today, so I like Kike here. Mark Hanna, 4100 bucks. He's probably one of my favorite plays in the slate. He's been playing well so far this season with an on-base percentage above 400. Slugging close to 500, WRC plus above 160, ISO close to 200, Woba around 492 plate appearances. So Mark Cannon, 4100 bucks leading off for one of the top sacks in the entire slate, if not the top one. I like him a lot. Cal Tucker, $4,000. He finally hit a donger, although it was against Anthony Bumboom at pitcher. So you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt. But it was at least nice to see because I had him in my Astros stack. I had the one through four. And then I skipped Uriel. I forget who I put at first base. And then I put in Cal Tucker there. And I saw him went deep, and I looked at the pitcher. I was like, okay, well, I guess that makes sense because it's been boom. But I like him here versus the righty. He's always had some decent power versus them. And Steven Piscotti, 2700 bucks. I think we've mentioned the entire Oakland A's lineup. I am not. I don't think we forgot anybody. We might have left one off, but I had to double check. But I do like all the A's today. Piscotti's always been a guy where eh, he's kind of versus righties. But versus lefties, he's got some decent pop and okay numbers. And that price point does make him viable. But with that being said, guys, I think that's going to be it for the video. So if you found this video helpful in any way possible, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. I really do appreciate it. If you want to follow me over on social media, that was in the bottom hand corner of your screen. If you guys are playing NASCAR today, you can check out my live stream. That'll be around 12 or 12.30 p.m. Eastern. And then I have my breakdown video. And we're going Talladega. So Talladega is one of the best tracks in the entire series, one of the most fun tracks. So I think you'd enjoy it if you tried it out. So watch the video if you have it. I'll try to link it in the end screen here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to support the channel over on Patreon, link is down below. I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you guys in the next video.